All right, praise the Lord. We're going to get started in our service today. If you're online, thank you so much for watching and being with us today. I'm just so thankful that uh, God has given us amazing technology so that we can still worship uh, together and be a fit family and also extend our worship time and our experience around the world. Hallelujah. Isn't that exciting? So I'm so thankful for what God is doing. And um, if you're new to the FIT Church, FIT stands for Faith and Training. It means we believe in growing and being all that God has created us to be. We want to go from level to level, glory to glory, and never stay the same in Jesus' name, right? So uh, I just encourage you to worship with us today freely, uh, with all your heart, and uh, just surrender all to Him. This is a wonderful time just to like lift him up and magnify his name and trust in him and just let God do a work in your heart and in your life. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, we come to you in the name of Yeshua, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for your awesome faithfulness. Thank you for your love that was poured out to us, Lord. You said that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You sent your one son, your one and only son to die on a cross for us as a sacrifice, a blood sacrifice that covers all of our sin as we repent and we believe upon him and we receive him into our hearts. And so, Lord, we just do that right now. We repent. We thank you so much for sending your son. We love you. We appreciate you. We call upon the name of the Lord. You said those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And so we call upon your precious name, Yeshua, today. We thank you for salvation. We thank you for the presence of the Ruach HaKadosh, your Holy Spirit. And I just pray your anointing be here with, with us today and that every person that is with us online, Lord, just will be touched by your spirit and by your word today. We come to honor you today as your family, as your children. We love you so much. We thank you for loving us and forgiving us as we repent and call upon you, Father as we forgive others who have sinned against us. We love you, Lord. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise your name. So, uh, if you were with us last week, you know that we had some, a little bit of technical difficulties uh, as we tried to do a, an interactive uh, Zoom uh, church service along with our Facebook Live service. We're doing the same today, except in our regular church sanctuary setting. Um, my 10-year-old lovely daughter, Mariah, is my assistant today, helping behind the scenes with the technical things. So give her your support. Give her a shout out. Good job, Mariah. Thank you. And I'm going to ask her, because I would like this to be somewhat interactive throughout our service today, I may call upon her in the middle of the service uh, to get information, or she might raise her hand to give some information if necessary. Uh, so just thank you for your support during those times, uh, because I cannot see what's going on be, uh, with, with her uh, at this time and the things that she's dealing with. So um, can you see how many people, uh, give me, uh, how many people we have on our Zoom? Do we have some yet? Okay, good, good, good. So. Um, you can share this links with people. If you're on Facebook Live, um, please uh, share on your timeline so other people can watch and worship with us. If you're on Zoom and you know friends and family member, uh, some of the family members, uh, that would be great if you can share the link with them so that they can worship with us today and uh, have this wonderful experience. And uh, we thank you for doing that. Praise the Lord. All right. Thank you, Lord. Ooh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If you've just joined us recently, for those of you that are church members, uh, you should have received a link uh, to our Zoom meeting. And you're welcome to watch there, make it interactive, or you can watch on Facebook Live. Praise the Lord. I'm thankful for, th uh, for uh, technology. Praise you, Lord. So has anybody experienced that before? You're going through something in your life. And you reached out to the wrong people, or you have attached yourself to something that you thought would be fulfilling, such as alcohol or drugs. 
pornography. There's so many different things that people reach out to to be fulfilled, not realizing that they can get fulfillment and all their answers from Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. See, I once was blind, but now I see. I was lost, but now I'm found. And see, the answer was Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, the, the Messiah, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. He's the answer to every need and every prayer. You just have to learn to trust in Him and stop leaning on your own understanding. See, that's most of our problems is we think we're so smart that we can lean on our own understanding. If you can lean on your own understanding, then why in the world are you running to drugs and running to alcohol and cigarettes and pornography and people that are not good for you for all the answers? See, if, if, if you could go by your own understanding, you'd have everything all figured out already and you'd be just fine. You wouldn't need anything else or anybody else. You just need yourself. But let me tell you, that is not a happy place to be. When you are in the presence of Almighty God, the Bible says there is fullness of joy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And the joy of the Lord is your strength. Thank you, Lord. See, the problem, the reason why people run into all these things is they're operating in weakness. They don't have the joy of the Lord. They've let the circumstances of life affect them and shake them and get them off the straight and narrow path. They listen to a lot of the wrong people. Listen, let me tell you something. You don't want to go to your car mechanic to get medical advice. I don't want my dentist to do brain surgery on me. See, a lot of people are going to the wrong people for the advice. They want some direction from the Holy Spirit, but they're going to somebody and asking for a spiritual advice from someone that does not have the Spirit of God in operation in their life. That is not wisdom, my friends. That is not wisdom. If you want spiritual advice, go to somebody that's filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah! that's going to give you good spiritual answers, basing everything on the Word of God and not just their uh, own intelligence or hearsay. They're going to lead you down the wrong path. If you want to go down the path of righteousness, if you want to experience the joy of the Lord and have strength in your life, quit listening to the wrong people. Quit going to the wrong places. Listen, you need to go to the Word of God the Holy Scriptures, from Genesis to Revelation, by the way, is the Holy Scriptures, not just Matthew to Revelation. Amen. Somebody needs to say amen. It's the, we need to go to the whole Word of God. His answers are there. He wants you to search out His Word, His Scriptures that He's placed. The B-I-B-L-E, Basic Instructions Before Leaving Earth. God's love letter to you and I. Hallelujah. You know God is a God of love. You know God is so romantic. He is just full of love and compassion. He, he cares about your every need, your every thought. He even has counted the hairs on your head. For some of you, that's zero, but hallelujah. <laughs> but God loves you so much that he cares about every detail in your life. Isn't that awesome? Somebody said, we serve an awesome God. Come on, somebody just type it there too. Come on, we serve an awesome God. Hallelujah. He cares about every detail of your life. Every detail. And some naysayer might come along and say, well, if God cares for every little bit, every detail of my life, how come he let me get in this mess? <laughs> because if you didn't get in the mess, you're not going to be strong enough to handle the next thing that comes into your life. He wants you to get stronger. I'm so thankful for the messes that I've been in in my life because he's turned every mess into a message. He's turned every test into a testimony. Hallelujah. See, we need to come to God with the right attitude. 
A lot of people do not receive Christ because they have the wrong attitude. A lot of people are uh, uh, resisting the Lord instead of resisting the enemy. See, the Bible says resist the enemy and he will flee from you. But you're not resisting the enemy. You're inviting him into your life because you're not resisting him. Are you with me? Do you understand? That? See, we've got to resist the enemy. We've got to speak the name of the Lord against him. I bind you, Satan, Hasatan, in the name of Yeshua. You have no place here in my life. I command you to flee. And the Bible says he's got to go. How awesome is that? He's given you the power of his name, the power of his word, the power of his spirit. All you got to do is walk in it, stand in it. See, if I give one of my people here in my business authority and I say, you today are the manager. Guess what? The people under their management need to submit to their authority. You today are the instructor. The students need to submit to their authority. If I pick somebody out of the church audience, the congregation, I say, today you are the preacher. They need to submit to the preacher. Listen to, him, to the word of God as I appoint them. See, God has given you authority. He's given you authority to cast out demons, to heal the sick, to raise the dead. Hallelujah. Walk in the authority that God has given to you. Hallelujah. 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 See, I remember, if I can tell you a little bit of my backstory. Whoo, I'll get into the sermon when the Lord tells me to. <laughs> right now, somebody needs to hear this. See, I'm going to tell you a little bit of my story. When I got saved, when I was 21 years old, I got radically born again. The Bible says we need to be born again. The flesh is born of flesh, and spirit is born of spirit, and we need to be born again by the spirit of Almighty God. See, I was born again and knew it. I was a new creation in Christ Jesus. The old was definitely gone. The new has come. I became a new person on the inside. I might have still looked the same on the outside, but I was a new person transformed by the power of God Almighty. And when I got saved at age 21, I gave the Lord my life. All the smoking, the cursing, the, you know, uh, the, the fornication, all the things that I was so focused on at that time. Living in sin, God took every one of those desires, just grabbed it and shoo, took it out of my heart. I had no desire to do any of it anymore. That doesn't mean I was perfect. And throughout my journey, yes, I've fallen into some sin here and there, but I was disgusted by it. And I repent of it. And I, I turned to God away from it. See, when you're living in sin, you just want to continue to do your sin. When you have the Holy Spirit on the inside, you have no desire to sin. Your desire is to live holy and righteous before our Almighty God. If you are right, if you have the Holy Spirit, that will be your desire. So when I got saved, I got radically saved at age 21. And all that junk fell out of my life. And immediately, through the power and anointing of Almighty God, I started sharing what God did within me. I went to my carnal, uh, worldly friends and said, Brother, let me tell you what happened to me. God did something in my heart. I went to the church and I went forward and I, I, I prayed a prayer and I surrendered my life to God. And when I did, this miraculous thing happened to me. And he washed all this stuff out of my life. I don't have the desire to go and do the things that we used to do. I want to invite you to come to church with me. All right, check again. I want to invite you to come to church with me. And some came, some didn't. Some hopped in my boat. And some flee. And that's okay. Some are going to hop in the boat with you and Jesus. And some are going to stand on the shore and say goodbye. You know what? They're going to continue in the land of their sin. While you're out there experiencing the awesome, miraculous power of God. As he calls you out to walk on the water with him. Hallelujah. I started sharing the love of God with people. And all of a sudden, people started giving their life to Jesus Christ. They repented of their sin. They called upon him. They got saved. And when they did, I got so excited. I'm like, whoa, this is exciting. Lord, I want to go and share this with the next person. Who's, I, would, I literally say, who's next? I want to know who's next. Lord, show me who's next. And I would be alert spiritually. Lord, just show me who's next. 
and I'll share the gospel with him, what you did in my life. And sure enough, as he continued to use me, more people gave their life to the Lord. Glory be to God. Blessed be your name. And I want to encourage you, every one of you watching that has been, maybe you've, you've given your life to the Lord, but you haven't been used to the capacity that you want to be used by the Lord. You're still held back by a spirit of fear. Well, you know, I don't know what people are going to think or say or do if I share Jesus with them. You know what? When you're walking in the Spirit and the Holy Spirit tells you to speak to somebody, you better speak. Be obedient. Now, there's going to be times, like I desire to share the gospel with everybody, but there's the time, there's going to be times where the Lord tells me no for whatever reason. I don't need to know about it. But as long as my heart's right and I desire to share the gospel with the lost and I'm willing and obedient, God will continue to use me and bless me. You know, help me to grow and reach more people. Is that where you're at today? Church, because we are in the end times. God wants to use you to reach the lost, to tell the untold, to bring people into the kingdom of God. And we're still sitting around focusing on our own circumstances of life. What we have, what we don't have, what people say, what they don't say, what people do to us, what they don't do to us. We're so focused on that. Instead of, Lord, use me for your glory. What do you want me to do today? When's the last time you woke up and said, good morning, Lord, I love you. What will we do today? What would you like me to do? Who do you want me to reach? And just obey. Just obey. Immediately, just obey. When you start walking in that level, God will start using you so miraculously you're going to be so amazed, like, Lord, wow, you're using little old me? Wow, I don't feel worthy, Lord, but thank you so much. See, you are the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. Some of you just don't realize it. You don't walk in it. See, I preached this, I think, last year sometime about how even when you sin as a Christian, you goof up, you make a mistake, you still need to proclaim I am the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. I don't care if you backslid and got on drugs, smoking your crap. Let me tell you something. While you're smoking that crap, I want you to just shout out, I am the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. You still need to proclaim it. Even while you're in your sin. Speak that over your life. God will deliver you and set you free from all that evil. You know, set your feet on the right path again. But don't forget who you are in Christ. Amen? Amen, amen. Hallelujah! Somebody shout unto the Lord. Thank you, Lord. See, uh, that was my pre-sermon. Now I'm ready to get started. <laughs> Hallelujah. So today, the title of my sermon is, is Dream Come True. You know, a lot of us have had, you know, Lifetime goals, and, you know, dreams, desires, things we would love to accomplish. And some of you have seen it as a fantasy world, like, well, you know, it'd be nice, but that's never going to happen. Right? And some of us have enough faith to believe, you know what? As I walk in God's will, it will come to pass. It shall come to pass. And we walk in that faith and God will bring it to pass. We cannot doubt. We cannot waver. Amen. So your dream, I'm going to give you a couple points about your dream. And if you're taking notes, which I recommend that you do, you should write these down. First of all, your dream is like, you, it's, it's where you want to be in your future. All right. And it, it, it's your destiny. Now, your dream is going to require other people's efforts and not just your own. That's number one. You know, I, I've asked people before, you know, what do you, want, what do you want in your future? And they're like, something so simple, you know, that doesn't require anybody's help, doesn't require any effort, hardly at all. I'm like, your dream is too small. God is bigger than that. So your dream is going to require other people's efforts, not just your own. If you can accomplish your dream all by yourself, it's too small and most likely not from God. We need to think bigger. 
Number two, your dream should not contradict God's word. Well, I would like to marry that man. He's married already. <laughs> right. you, you cannot go against God's will. All right? Um, your dream should not, it should not hurt anybody. That would be a contradiction of God's will. If it's hurting somebody else, it should not be sinful. If it's sinful, then it's contradicting God's will. And if it's against somebody else's will, it's against God's will. Hallelujah. Because God has given us all a free will to choose. Amen. Number three, your dream should be written in the form of a vision. Your written vision will provide others direction who are supporting and propelling your vision. We all know this scripture, Habakkuk 2, verse 2, says, Then the Lord answered, answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain on tablets, that they may run who reads it. Hallelujah. I told you I might interject some things in the middle of the service to check on my, my daughter. So, Mariah, is everything going good back there? Are you okay? Yes. Any questions? All right, we're good. Hallelujah. So make it plain upon tablets that he may run who reads it. See, that means it's going to be bigger than yourself. Because somebody else sees your vision that's written. They say, oh, I want to run with you. I want to do this thing with you. I want to accomplish this thing with you. Help propel it. See, your dream and your destiny is ordained by God Almighty. Hallelujah. I want you to think about that. Write that down. Your dream and your destiny is ordained by God. You need to know that you have a God-given purpose on this earth. Okay? God has a purpose for you. He's the potter, you are the clay. He will mold you and make you into whatever he wants today. Hallelujah. <laughs> there I go rhyming again. You need to be in pursuit of knowing your purpose and fulfilling the mission that God has sent you on. And you know what? Your mission is to fulfill your destiny. That's your mission. God has a destiny for you. Destiny is your destination. But your mission is to fulfill that destiny. Your dream should be in line with your destiny. And God has you where you are at right now for a divine purpose, you see. You need to take that in and understand that. You're where you are at right now for a divine purpose. All the things that I've been through in my life, I believe God orchestrated. And if I made a decision throughout my, with my will to do something wrong, to get off the track, he grabbed me, he orchestrated it to where he would get me back on track. But we need to remember that God will take all things, make all things for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. See, even if I goof something up in my own will, it's his will to turn around for the good. To get you back on track with your destiny. Hallelujah. So I want to explain something to you. And hopefully you can get this. Please try to pay attention. And I wish I had some props actually to explain a little bit better. But let me use the example of um, workers that are working on a project. So, if I have a vision, I have a dream, I have a goal that I want to accomplish, and I've hired people to help me to accomplish that goal, and I've delegated to them, I said, I need you to do this, and I need you to do this. This person slacks off, they don't do what I ask them to do, to fulfill that goal, to reach that goal that leads to my dream. Guess what? I'm going to find somebody else that's going to fill that spot to make up for it. Now, this other person might have to take up the slack and do things that this person messed up. So I want you to see that how God works. Like, 
He's got a perfect plan. He's ordained you to do something on this earth. If you're a Christian, he has the perfect plan of salvation for you. And he's got a perfect journey for you. You're going to step off the path every once in a while. And he's going to have to orchestrate things to get everything back in order. And he is the almighty math, math, mathematician or whatever. Right? He can put all these equations together to redirect things and bring it back in order, even as we goof it up. Hallelujah. Proverbs 16, verse 4. It says, The Lord has made all things for himself. Yes, even the wicked for the day of evil. Wow. God says he made all things for himself. See, he's the potter, he's the clay. Okay, so I can hire people for different things. I can hire somebody to go um, and service somebody very well, be a blessing to them in some capacity. And I can hire a bill collector to get on somebody's case to collect something that they owe. This person looks like the bad guy. This person looks like a blessing, right? But I have appointed both of them to do something that helps me to reach my goal. See, God is the same way. He, he, he's created. He's made all things for himself, the Bible says. Even the wicked for the day of evil. We need to understand that God chooses who he wants. And after he chooses us, he will direct our steps. Proverbs 16, 9 says, A man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. See, we might have our own plans. I might have my, my dream and my goal and things that I want to accomplish, and I believe that dream is ordained by God. But I may, in my efforts, write out a plan that's not right in uh, and perfect alignment with God's plan. So he says in Proverbs 69, a man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. So I might plan to go this way, but the Lord said, no, no, we need you to go this way. And I might have to readjust. Let's take a look at a couple of scriptures that can be confused, uh, confusing if, if you do not go to the original Greek text, okay, about your calling. If you have your Bible with you, turn to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, <clears throat> verse 29. I'm going to read out of the New King James Version. Romans chapter 8, verse 29. It says, For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, he also called. I want you to remember that word called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, he also glorified. So the word here that we see in this scripture that says called, it's the word in Greek, kaleo, which is, it means to name someone, to give name to, to name, a label, a title, give name to. Like, I call you something. I call you a pastor. I call you my daughter. I call you Mariah. I call, you know, this is naming someone. Now, if you hold your finger there and go to Matthew verse 22, or chapter 22, verse 14. Matthew 22, verse number 14. You don't have to go there if you don't want. It's a very short verse. It simply says, For many are called, but few are chosen. I want you to take that in and think about it. It says, For many are called, but few are chosen. This word called is not the same called as we just read in the other verse. It does not mean to name someone. The word called here is kletos, which means invited. So we can say it this way. For many are invited, but few are actually chosen. Now, if we put 
Both of these scriptures together, from Romans chapter 8 and Matthew 29, maybe we can get a clearer understanding here. I'm going to say it a little bit differently. We could say it like this. For whom he predestinated to salvation, he also predestinated to be conformed, to be like his son, that Yeshua would be the firstborn of all those who are born after him and believe upon him. You're not starting to make sense there. Now, this part will make more sense. Moreover, whom he predestined, he also named. And who he named, he also justified. And whom he justified, he also glorified. So in short, he predestined certain of us to be saved through Christ, which will result in being glorified in heaven. And it is not God's will that any of us that are called should perish. Hallelujah. Maybe that will shed some light on some scriptures that you have wondered about. There are also people in the kingdom of God, even though he has called you, you've been invited, and he named you, he's done both, and he's justified you, he's glorified you. There's also people that are not honorable, in the kingdom of God, but still remain in his kingdom. Check this out. 2 Timothy chapter 2, starting at verse number 19. Again, the New King James Version. 2 Timothy chapter 2, starting at verse 19. It says, Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands, having this seal. The Lord knows those who are his, and let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some of honor and some of are for dishonor. Therefore, If anyone cleanses himself from the latter, which is the dishonor, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. So I want you to notice in verse number 20, he says, but in a great house. Okay? Matter of fact, I think we should read the whole thing again so you kind of grasp this. Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands, having this seal. Okay, his foundation has this seal written upon it. The Lord knows those who are his. Okay, he has a relationship, just as I have with my daughter. And also it says, let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. He's giving direction here. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver. In God's house, there's not only vessels of honor and dishonor, as we see here. See, it says, but also wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. So therefore... Even within God's kingdom, you can be saved, but be a dishonorable vessel. You can be dishonoring God. I have people that have been my students. I have invited them into my kingdom. (laughs) Fit, right? My fit kingdom. And some have been honorable. Some have been dishonorable. But I still allow them to remain, even in their dishonor. But it says, if you cleanse yourself from the dishonor, Then you'll be sanctified, you'll be set apart and useful for the master. Cleanse yourself and prepare for every good work. Hallelujah. All right, so some people are appointed in God's kingdom to be the disobedient ones. So you better pray and ask God for mercy and to call you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Cleanse yourself from the dishonorable things. Let's look at 1 Peter chapter 2. And verse number four, 1 Peter chapter two, starting at verse number four, it says, coming to him as to a living stone, 
rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious, you also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is also contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious. But to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone and the stone, a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble, listen to this now, they stumble being disobedient to the word to which they also were appointed. Hmm. So we see here, they were appointed to be disobedient. Wow. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Wow. Hallelujah. So they stumble, being disobedient to the word to which they were also appointed. So, I want you to remember, just as I explained, I could choose to hire people to fulfill my vision, to do things that ultimately make my plans come to pass. See, I have recruited people that were 100% sold out on the vision that I have, that God gave to me, and they've been very loyal. And I've also recruited people for a time to fulfill a need. And then they end up quitting. Also, if they rebel against my authority and they turn on me as their employer, course, I will terminate them. See, God can do the same type of thing in his kingdom. He appoints people to honor and dishonor. Honorable vessels, dishonorable vessel. Now, you may say, in your lack of understanding, well, how is this fair? That's not fair. That doesn't sound very loving. But remember, God is the potter. We are the clay. I have the option of creating something with clay and make it look however I want. I can make something look very bad and I can create another one that looks very beautiful. That's my choice as the master creator of that masterpiece. God is your master creator and he can do with you as he will. Hallelujah. So predestining is like raising a child to take over my business and my legacy. Inviting someone is like putting out a job ad to hire someone. Calling them or labeling them or giving them a name, as Scripture says, is to give them a title and a position. So I want you to see how this works. I am comparing spiritual things with natural things so that it comes alive and you can understand it. I'm going to say it one more time. Remember, God foreknows. He, he predestines, then he invites, he calls, he justifies, and he glorifies, as we saw in the scripture earlier. So predestinating is like raising a child to take over my business and legacy. Inviting someone is like putting out a job ad to hire. Calling them or labeling them or giving them a name, as Scripture says, is to give them a title and or a position. Justifying them is like approving them for the job and giving them the training and skills to accomplish what I've delegated to them. And glorifying them is like rewarding them and giving them recognition for a job well done. Hallelujah. Giving them praise and celebrating their excellence. See, that's what God does with his people. Hallelujah. So I wonder what level are you at today?
Have you recognized that you've been predestined to be a child of God? Have you recognized that you are invited into God's kingdom and family? Have you recognized that you have been given the name Christian and identified as a child of Almighty God? Have you recognized that you have been approved to do specific work in the kingdom of God? And do you recognize your responsibilities with that? Have you been recognized by others and by God for a job well done? Hallelujah. When he says, well done, my good and faithful servant. Now, let's go back to your dream. The dream come true. We all desire for our dreams to come true. Hallelujah. Now that you know that God predestines us, if we are Christians, this means that he has a divine destiny for us, which ultimately is heaven. We know that as Christians. Heaven will be our home. That also means that our dreams should be in line with our destiny. Now I want you to rethink your dream for just a moment. Because some of you, your dream has been too small and insignificant to where it doesn't really help people at all. My dream is to go to Hawaii. Well, who cares? I mean, that's that should be maybe a goal, you know. It's on your things to do list, but not your dream. You are you with me? Do you understand that that's too insignificant? That is not changing people's lives. And so, I want to encourage you to rethink your dreams today. God, please reveal to me my destiny on this earth. What have you called me to do so that I can fulfill the purpose that you've given to me? Rethink your dream. Think big. Dream big. Hallelujah. Although you have been predestined, I want you to remember that you have still a free will of choice. Just as when I hire someone that has great skills and a wonderful attitude, but later maybe decides to rebel against me and break their loyalty and then lose their position on the team. See, God can call you and predestine you, but you still have a free will to rebel against him and end up in hell, although he invited you to be in heaven. Help us, Lord. See, your dream can be aligned with God's plan for your life, and then you can choose to redirect your life. But he always tries to get you back on the right path by orchestrating certain things in life. But it's your choice ultimately to follow his leading. Hallelujah. In order to follow God's leading, you must be humble and you must be submitted to his will. You must be willing to listen closely and obey without even understanding all the details. That's where a lot of us miss it. Lord, I'll obey you if you just explain to me why I need to do this. No! We should not have that attitude. That's like I asked one of my employees, I need you to go and move this over to there. Instead of saying, yes, sir, they say, why do I need to do that? <laughs> right? Like, just listen, trust me, I have a vision, I have a reason, I have a purpose. you understand later. So my attitude is trust and obey God first, and later he will reveal to me why. I don't need to know first. Hallelujah. Remember, he is the master, he is the king, and you're operating in his kingdom under his kingship. It's our job to submit to his plans it's not his job to submit to our plans. Ooh. Did you get that? I think I need to say that one more time. Hallelujah. It's our job to submit to his plans. 
It's not his job to submit to our plans. But that's what a lot of people on this earth, a lot of even Christians, are trying to do is get God to fit into their little box, get God to fit into their life, get God to fit into their plans. God's shaking you and waking you to say, listen, I have something better for you. But you keep insisting on doing things your own way. Let me guide you. Let me show you the way to full joy, full blessings in your life. Just submit to me. Obey. Because I love you. See, my desire is for God to control me in whatever manner he can, right? And God's like, I just want you to do what I already told you to do. I want you to be in line with my word. I want you to walk in the spirit, learn how to hear my voice so that when I give you direction, you can make the right choice. And I'll lead you down the path of righteousness and blessings. And your dreams will come true. And they will be in line with my will and my destiny for your life. Hallelujah. Did anybody get anything from the Word of God today? Are you encouraged? I'm encouraged. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise your holy name. Thank you, Lord. Come on, let's just praise Him. Father, thank you so much for your Word. Give us revelation, Father. Help us to submit to your will. Help, Father, us to be in a line with the dream that you've given to us, the destiny that you've given to us, and that those dreams come true, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Come on, just thank him. Thank him. Thank him. You're so worthy to be praised, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for predestining us, for inviting us, for calling us, for justifying us and glorifying us as we walk in your will. Submit to your ways. We love you, Father. In the name of Yeshua, we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So, before we dismiss today, um, I know some of you said that it's more convenient for you to give in uh, into the ministry uh, by cash. Um, if you need to do that, fix the iPad, please. If you need to do that, just reach out to me and just let us know, and uh, we'll definitely work out a time where you can just drop your offering in our, our mailbox so we can keep the physical distancing. Um, uh, and for those of you that would like to give online, um, I don't have the link right there right now, but I'm going to come back and I'm going to put it there on our Facebook page. Okay, so those of you that are on Zoom, uh, in just a, a little, a few minutes after we get done with the service, um, you can go to, matter of fact, the link should still be there from last week. I think I put it there last week from our last week's service. And so you can click on that link uh, to give your tithes and offerings. This is a very, very important time, actually, to give your tithes and offerings because this is proving your faith. When everything looks like it's going down and you say, God, I'm still going to trust you. Woo, hallelujah. See, that's when you're operating by faith. That's when I feel like I always want to give more. Just say, God, hey, I'm all yours. I trust in you and I know he'll provide. Hallelujah. So uh, <clears throat> check that link. Also, uh, remember we have our ministry in India and they are in the same kind of situation. I can imagine it's a lot worse because they are already in a bad situation. And now they're on lockdown also. Pastor David in India, our director there, says that you know they've barely been able to get food. And so uh, we want to be able to supply for them. Uh, so if you have uh, an offering that you would like to send to India uh, for our orphans, I usually send that uh, after the 8th of the month. So uh, that's in four days. If you can have that in, uh, any offerings for India within the next four days, that would be uh, wonderful. They will greatly appreciate your support for them and helping our pastors, our orphans, and, and all the needs that we have there. Hallelujah. Um, let's see, anything else? And I think there's a place, even if you're giving by uh, uh, through that link, through our PayPal, uh, 
ministry PayPal account, there should be a note there that you can identify where you're giving to and what you're giving to. And so you just put that in the message when you give online, and we will make sure that that goes to the right place. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Father, for uh, this time with you. Thank you for the givers today, Lord, that are just giving faithfully and trusting in you. I just pray you bless them for their faithfulness and that you multiply these gifts, Father. And we can use these things to help the, uh, reach people for your kingdom and uh, reach people that are in need at this time uh, that maybe need some food or some extra assistance, Lord. We want to be a blessing to them as a ministry. And so we thank you, Father, that uh, we can do that. We give you the glory for it. In the name of Yeshua, we love you. Okay, one more announcement before we dismiss today. So uh, this is actually a question for you guys. I'm going to survey you right now uh, to, to get some feedback. Uh, next, This next week is Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And so uh, during this time, you know, each year we have a Passover Seder where we come together and um, we, uh, we observe that. And it's always a wonderful time when we come together for a Passover Seder. Um, I, I calculated that we probably would only even have like eight people that would show uh, if we had it uh, here at, at, in the sanctuary. I mean, in the other room in, in our facility. And if we did, um, I would separate the tables and make sure everybody's probably like 10 feet apart. And uh, we could even you know, take extra precautions with gloves and masks or whatever we need to do. Um, but I wanted to get your vote if you would prefer to come here for our Passover Seder, and we still have it here. The Bible tells us we should observe it, but we could also uh, do something new, and we could try to observe it right here um, live online, or we could do both um, uh, for people that are not uh, local. Um, but I would like to get your input so that we can make a good decision and we will post our decision on our Facebook page uh, coming up uh, throughout the next few days. And so, of course, we love delicious food. And if we can prepare food together and bring it here, um, that would be awesome. If not, you will all be responsible for preparing all of your own dishes uh, for our Passover Seder. And we would still go through the, uh, the whole Seder ceremony. So please uh, put your opinion and vote here on our Facebook Live or on our Zoom so that I can uh, kind of base my decision on what you guys would like to do. I think the Lord would be okay with either way because we're still joining together even though it's virtually and so we're still honoring Him and focusing on Him. So I think I'm okay with that if that's what you want to do, but I'm also okay with doing one here um, the, the uh, uh, speaking and speaking to my attorney, if this is a question that you might have uh, about the laws right now of the land, uh, churches, ministries are exempt from closing down. It's just that they need to have the, you know, the not more than ten people and the social distancing type of thing. Which, you know, as uh, maybe some of you saw my post uh, on the Fit Martial Arts page, I'm against social distancing. I'm just for the physical distancing for right now to keep people safe. Um, so six to ten foot should be fine, just as they say. Just follow the laws that they put into place. But yes, we can be open as a ministry as long as we are following the physical distancing and just being wise. So please put your vote there, and uh, I will make a decision coming up in the next couple days. And thank you again, guys, for being with us. Thank you for being faithful givers. Thank you for just... Um, just loving the Lord with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength and putting Him first in all of the things that you do. And I uh, love you guys. God loves you. God bless you. Shabbat Shalom. Have a blessed week. Bye-bye. Hallelujah. God bless you guys.